And I realized this was so last minute, but I had already committed to doing it and committed to this day. And we had some signups. So I didn't want to go back on my word. Um, as I said, this kind of started because we had um, some questions about libraries pop up on Free Advice Fridays. And we had people asking questions. And I said, you know what, you guys, I will just do a library market webinar for you. We set a day right then and there. And then, of course, nothing goes to plan, but we're going to roll with it anyway. Perfect. Yeah, so for some of you, this is going to be, like Laura, a brand new idea, the idea for library marketing. And that's kind of what we're going to talk about today as we roll into things. Now, if you have questions, drop them in the Q&A. We will have time for that at the end for sure. Um, so feel free to drop in questions and I'll make sure we get to them. And in the library market, the thing that people always ask about the library market is why bother, right? Like you're going to sell a copy, maybe two copies into the library market. And why even bother with that? But the thing about the library market is that a lot of people go to the library. And there are a lot more libraries than you're probably thinking that there are, which we're going to cover today. So let's jump right in. I think we've had people jump on. So today we're going to cover some things specifically, and they are why libraries should be one of your top priorities as an author or a publisher, what librarians look for when buying books, why and how to get your titles listed with a wholesaler, that's a really important one, and how to sell librarians on both you and your book, and then what to do once the library says yes, once they say, okay, we'll stock your book, what do you do to make sure that that's a great partnership and something you can cultivate moving forward? So as most of you probably know, my name is Carrie Ray Barnum. I'm the Executive Director of New Shelves Books. You can find me on newshelves.com. You can email me at carrie at newshelves.com. And again, if you have follow-up questions we don't get to today, or you have sideline questions that don't have to do with libraries, you can always find me every Friday, 10 a.m. Eastern at newshelves.com forward slash F-A-F. It's Free Advice Fridays where I answer questions live for an hour every Friday just to make sure that I'm helping the authors and publishers who do have questions. Now, are you ready to break into this market that pays you to display your books? Not only are they going to buy your books, they are going to pay you to display your books, which is crazy, right? And that's the library market, because not only are they going to buy your book, they're going to pay you for that book sale, but then they are oftentimes, librarians are going to display your books, and they are more likely to hand sell your book than almost any other bookseller, which is an amazing opportunity if you know how to work within this market. Now, when I get asked, why bother with libraries, there are some specific things that I always talk about. There are a lot more libraries than bookstores. We're going to look at the numbers in a minute, but when I say a lot, I mean a lot. Not like there are more libraries than bookstores. No, no, no. There are a ton more libraries than bookstores. They have a budget and they have to spend that budget. Every single year they get a budget and if they don't spend it, then they lose it. And if they lose that budget next year when they're putting in for their budget considerations, they're going to get a smaller budget. Librarians are smart people. They're not going to let that happen. So while, of course, they want to make their budget stretch and get all they can for it, they also have money they have to use, which means they are always acquiring new titles. Libraries are free advertising to avid readers. People who go to the library very often are people who are reading constantly. They're not reading a book a month. They're constantly reading, sometimes up to a book or even two a day. And this is free advertising. Every time someone walks by your book on a shelf, Think of it like, um, I don't know, like an Amazon ad. Every time you do an Amazon ad, you simply are paying to get it seen by readers. Well, you're not paying and you are getting seen by readers constantly, and that's a big value. And getting libraries to stock your book will increase your 
credibility in the publishing industry because libraries are kind of like the gatekeepers. So if you get your book into a library, suddenly it's looking a little more appealing to other places, for example, for bookstores or retail stores, or even to places like Amazon. Now, I, I love to ask this one and use the Q&A box for me. Can you guess how many libraries are operating within the United States? Type in any number, but I always like to get a feel for if people realize how many libraries are in the United States. I will say I was recently at 20 Books Vegas, which is an author conference, and this came up in casual, con casual conversation um, with actually some people in the industry, some people who are working over at Ingram Spark, and they were even surprised by the number. Uh, so we're getting answers in like 2 million. That's a good guess. Um, I usually get answers around 1,000, 20,000. And when we're looking at libraries, the numbers are pretty awesome. For libraries, we're looking at over 116,000 libraries in the US alone, in just the US. And you can see here, this is a breakdown and it talks about our public libraries. So public libraries, we're looking at approximately 16,500. For academic libraries, we're talking about four-year colleges or different things like that, just over 3,000. But for school libraries, so if you have children's books, middle grade or young adult books, you should be perking up at this. There are over 98,000 libraries in schools alone. Then we have special forces, armed forces and government libraries that make up um, a small percentage as well. But what this should tell you is there are a lot of opportunities to sell your books. So when people ask me questions like, well, why bother with a the library? They might buy one copy. Okay, but if you have a middle grade fantasy book and 98,000 libraries buy one copy of your book, well, then you've sold a heck of a lot of books. So there are so many opportunities and most libraries don't buy a single copy. Many of them will buy multiple copies. In some cases, they'll buy enough to do a book club and they're going to market your book to readers, which is a huge value that you don't get almost anywhere else. You do get it in bookstores, but as we've seen, and as we're gonna talk about, there's not as many bookstores as there are libraries. And to put this just into perspective, there are six times more libraries than bookstores in the United States, six times. That means there's the potential for six times the people to visit a library than a bookstore. And you don't have to spend anything at libraries, which means that people are using them even more, especially in today's economy. There are eight times more libraries than McDonald's restaurants in the US. And I love this number because it's one of those things when I travel, um, when I go on car rides, I feel like there's a McDonald's at every corner, but there are eight times more libraries than McDonald's. That should kind of start setting into your mind how many libraries there are. And there are 10 times more libraries in the US than there are Walmart stores in the entire world. Again, one of those things where like Walmart is everywhere, libraries are even more prevalent than Walmart. Now, as I mentioned, libraries have money and if they don't use it, they lose it, it's gone. And librarians are smart people. They're not gonna let that happen. So our numbers are a little bit older because that's how libraries roll. They're often um, subsidized by the government, they're run by the government. So our numbers come slowly. But in 2020, the average total budget was 7,652,300 with mid-sized libraries reporting the largest gains, meaning that they are actually increasing their budgets year over year. And grants and community support have continued to support those budgets. Yes, we saw a dip during the pandemic and we saw um, some different things, but there are definitely some opportunities where these things are still rolling in. And not only are budgets staying pretty steady now, but also we are seeing communities kind of research for libraries, supporting their libraries, and libraries have set aside funds for acquisitions. So not just for different things, but for actual acquisitions of new materials. 
So there are good news. Libraries nationwide can and do buy books from both traditional and indie publishers. This is not something that is just for big traditional houses. This is not just for HarperCollins. This is not just for Penguin. This is something that can apply to indie publishers as well. In fact, if you can get connected with your local library, they love to support local. Libraries are local hubs and you have a great opportunity to sell your book for them and to them as long as you know how to do it well and how to work with them in such a way that it's a great system for them as well as for you. And that's what I'm going to teach you how to do today. So when a library stocks your book, you not only get paid for the sale, you get paid the royalty on that sale, but you also receive free advertising. Again, libraries are constantly recommending new books. Those avid readers that come in every week, I'll tell you when I was a kid, um, I remember getting my first library card. It was like the biggest thing ever. I remember going into the library and maxing out that card. I was allowed to get 15 books and my mom took me every Tuesday after dance class. And I ran, I read a book or two a day. So 15 books every week. You better believe that I soon became friends with my local librarian and they were constantly recommending new books and they were finding new books they thought I'd like. That is what librarians do. That's what's so beautiful and special about them is that they are constantly working with avid readers. And if your book is on their shelf, it's free advertising. They can come across, they can hand sell and recommend your book. And you might find your next raving fan who when the library doesn't have your next book, they're gonna go buy it at the local bookstore or at Amazon. Or if they finish the book at 2 a.m. and they just can't wait to finish the series, they're going to go read it on Kindle Unlimited or buy it. So this is a type of advertising we don't often think about because in advertising, you're typically paying to get seen. In this type of advertising, it is where your book is available and librarians have, their job is to sell the community, to make sure books are being checked out, to make sure they're servicing the community. That is how they get their budgets, it's how they keep their jobs. And so they are recommending books that are on the shelves. And if your book is there, you have a great shot of being seen and checked out getting new fans and building your name and reputation in the industry. And sometimes I hear, well, aren't libraries kind of out? Like who visits libraries anymore? And you might be surprised. Voters frequently visit libraries in person and online. So surveys show us that 70% of vo voters have visited a public library in the last year. On average, 8.6 visits. And online, these numbers are a little bit old, and I think that they are probably higher. But online, 52% have visited the library's website in the last year, an average of 7.6 visits. That means most people in your community, if you go into a room and say, hey, who's been to the library in the last year? Most of them are going to say that they have been. Now that could be for a community event. That could be to go vote, actually. A lot of uh, libraries house um, voter um, registrations and they actually are a voting poll place. And many of them, if they haven't physically been into a library, they are actually going to go online and check out books or audiobooks online. So there is a huge opportunity to get in front of people. Libraries are still very prevalent. I think if we looked at the, uh, the breakdown of who's visiting libraries, we would see a lot of young families tend to visit libraries and a lot of our seniors tend to visit libraries. Now, sure, there's a smattering in between, but I think those are some of our biggest demographics. And you know what that means if you've got children's books or if you have books that a slightly older demographic will be interested in, then you've got a huge opportunity in the library market. Now, this again, it's from 2018. Our numbers are slow because we get them from libraries, but the numbers, I've talked to librarians, I talk to them all the time, and these genres are still right alongside with the popular genres. So I want to take a look at this. For our nonfiction categories, topping the list, 
is cookbooks. So if you've got a cookbook, you're a great candidate for the library market. Next is biography and memoir. And I think this is super interesting because sometimes it is hard to sell a biography or a memoir directly through bookstores or Amazon. It's one of those things that can be hard to happen, but they are being checked out at libraries. Politics and current events are being checked out at libraries. Historical books, arts and crafts, if you've got a book about jewelry making or how to knit or woodcraft, libraries are your people. Then medicine and health and self-help. Now, I will say that I think self-help is one of those things that does get checked out, but um, we definitely see a lot of self-help books being sold directly online because maybe people are a little bit shy about checking those out in person, but still an opportunity for you. Now, when we talk about fiction, romance, why? Because romance readers read books like no other genre. They will just go through a book a day, two books a day. Um, romance readers kind of treat books like soap operas. They're going to just zoom through them. They're going to read them. And then next up is thriller and mysteries. So people who have cozy mysteries, I know it says thriller, but cozy mystery is right up there. Those are avid readers, people who are constantly looking for something new. And then the next two might surprise you, historical fiction and Christian fiction top the list. So if you have either historical fiction or Christian fiction, and you feel like you haven't really been able to break into other markets like bookstores, consider libraries. They are looking for new books in these genres specifically. And when we look at not only what libraries are buying, but what's circulating, I think this is great. And again, numbers are a little outdated, but ebooks and print books, it's separated here. Mystery and suspense, top of the line. So we're seeing a lot of books being checked out that are mystery and suspense. General fiction kind of lumps everything that wasn't set into a, a category. It may include some other genres. And then romance, top right up there, romance, thrillers. Again, these are the categories that are being bought the most and they are being checked out quite a bit. Christian fiction, women's fiction, historical fiction. And then we've got young adult. Now my personal opinion of why this is, is a lot of these stats come from public libraries and young adults tend to check out books from where? Their schools. I know I have two kids in school and they go to the library every week. So it's not as often that we're going to the public library because we're checking out through um, the school libraries. So young adults still in there though, you'll see a lot of those, then literary fiction, science fiction and fantasy. And you'll notice that science fiction and fantasy is higher on the ebook side. And I would venture to guess that as online checkout for ebooks through Overdrive and the Libby system has become more popular, I would bet that the voracious readers in science fiction and romance and mystery and suspense, I would bet these numbers are even higher where people are checking out more and more ebooks and they're checking them out um, constantly looking for new books. So if your genre is on this list, this should feel pretty good to you because this means you have a chance to sell into the library system and that your book may not only be taken, but wanted that they may be looking for new books like yours. And ebook popularity in libraries grew by leaps and bounds in 2020 and 2021. Why? Because everyone was locked at home. We couldn't go to libraries. So what happened? People discovered the overdrive system, the Libby system. They were discovering that even though the library was closed, they could read books through their local library, audiobooks, ebooks, and they could read them directly online through overdrive. And this became a huge Thing. People who maybe weren't using ebooks before, are now using ebooks, people who went in and physically checked out books were like, wow, this is so easy. My e reader is awesome. So, libraries in 2020 saw a significant shift in borrowing habits as ebook usage soared. Overdrive, which is a major distributor of ebooks, audiobooks, and streaming video to libraries, reported that its clients worldwide collectively loaned out more than 208. 289 million ebooks. 
which was a 40% increase from 2019. And that number, when we look at the, the stats from 2020 to 2021, we saw not only that translate, but continue to grow even a little bit more. It was like these voracious readers realized they could check out books any time of the day or night, and it would go directly onto their tablet or their phone. And we awakened a monster that we were very happy to have. Um, so ebooks, if your book is available through Overdrive, if you have an ebook or an audiobook that is wide, it's not exclusive to ACX or to Kindle Unlimited and Amazon, you have a huge opportunity because you know what happened when libraries realized that everyone was checking out ebooks and audiobooks online? They realized they didn't have enough and they needed to specifically put funds aside in order to buy more ebooks and audiobooks to support all of the new readers who are downloading books through o Overdrive. So there is not only a budget for this, there is a hefty budget for books that are through either Baker and Taylor online for ebooks and audiobooks, Overdrive. Um, there's a huge opportunity for authors and publishers to sell their books into libraries in this specific area. Now, if you're wondering if libraries are already stocking your title, I have a fun little project for you. Um, go to worldcat.org and search your ISBN. Do not search your title and your name. I mean, I guess you can, but honestly, it's going to take forever to get you there. Search the ISBN and your book may show up. It's completely awesome. It's free and WorldCat is a cataloging system for libraries. So you can look and see if your book is already being stocked. Super fun. I know probably half of you have left our Zoom screen to go to WorldCat and search your um, ISBN. So if that's you, that's all right. I understand. Let us know in the Q&A if you find your book or not. And if you don't find your book, don't be upset. That's okay because if your book's not there yet, that doesn't mean your book can't be in there next week or next month or next year. It is a fun tool to see if your book's already being stocked by libraries. And sometimes you're surprised. I've had clients where we've typed in their ISBN and found their book is um, being cataloged in Africa and Australia and Germany in their local hometown, and they never even marketed to them. And then I have clients who maybe don't have their book in the WorldCat system yet, but as they are marketing their book, it's kind of a fun way to track and see if your book is starting to get stocked in library systems. It can take a long time. It can be a little slow for people to upload, um, but it's a really fun tracking tool. So I highly recommend that you go and search worldcat.org for your ISBN to see if your book is already in the library market. And now I think we've established libraries are awesome. We love libraries and they're definitely worth um, getting your book into. Now the question is like, okay, great, Carrie, I get it, but how do I get libraries to stock my book? And the answer is pretty simple. And that is simply, you have to approach them like a pro. And what I mean by that is you have to know what they want, you have to anticipate your needs, and you have to approach them in such a way that it's easy for them to say yes. And I'm going to walk you through the steps of how to do that. So when you go and you pitch your local library, or you pitch a library in your hometown or, um, you know, internationally, that you have the right tools so that you can pitch them like a pro. So the first thing we need to do is we need to understand the librarian's goals. In order to meet their needs, we have to know what they are. So number one, librarians want books that entice people to visit their libraries. Their job is to bring people into the door. That is what literally keeps them open. That is what keeps them in a job. So they want books that people come in to find and to check out. They want to acquire books that their visitors will enjoy. I mean, sounds pretty basic, but it's true. They want books, yeah, that are helpful, that people need, but they also want books that people are just gonna be like, man, my library has the best books. They always make the best recommendations because that's part of their job. They want to acquire books that serve the community. Again, libraries are this community hub that 
people go to when they are frustrated because they're out of a job and they need to build their resume, oftentimes they'll go to the library where they can use free computers and they can get help building their resume. They want books that will talk about resume writing. They want books that will serve the community. If you live in an area with a very senior community that maybe has high rates of Alzheimer's, they want books that address that and serve the community. So it's important to think about not only is your book awesome, but how can your book serve the community? Whether it be in a really tangible way, such as talking about how to build a resume or in the more basic way of, hey, it's really entertaining, it's romance. And I know that most of your, your patrons are reading romance and that's a big um, genre for you. That's serving the community. They also want to stay in budget. Yes, they've got a budget and they have to use it, but they're smart shoppers. They also want to make sure that they're not just blowing their budgets on things. They want to be smart shoppers. And they also want a book and an author that will be easy to work with. They do not want to have to teach you how to work with them. They want an author who has taken the time to educate themselves so that they're easy to work with and you're not taking up their valuable time or hassling them. And probably most importantly, they want to work with authors and publishers that understand this, that understand their needs and that understand that they don't owe you a chance. You have a product that you're trying to sell and it's your job to educate yourself to make sure that you present your product in such a way that it's easy for them to say yes. And part of that is understanding how a library buys books. So number one, we're going to go with an indie publisher and an indie publisher gets their books listed at a wholesaler. So this may be uploading your book to Ingram Spark for Ingram Wholesaler. It may be taking your offset print book and working with a book warehouse who gets your book into a wholesaler like Baker and Taylor or Ingram. First though, the book has to be available at a wholesaler. About a third of libraries will order books directly from Amazon, but all of them order through wholesalers. And in some cases they are only allowed to order through wholesalers or even specific wholesalers. So first things first, you need to make sure your book is available from a wholesaler. And then after that, the book has to be presented to the librarian. You have to tell them that your book exists. You have to email them, you have to stop by, you have to pitch them. After that, the book is scheduled for purchase during a budget calendar. So yes, sometimes the librarian will be like, wow, this book is awesome. I could see where it'd be super popular. Let me go order it right now. But very often, it's not that specific librarian who's ordering it. That librarian is going to make their wish list, which goes up the line, that wish list gets approved or not, and then there's an ordering system that someone orders from. Now, some bigger libraries like the New York City Public Library may order as often as once a week. However, there are other library systems that do not get to order as often. Some of them will order once a month, and some will even only order once a quarter. So if a librarian says, yeah, I'd love to buy your book, and you check the next day and you're like, I see no sales. They lied to me. That's not necessarily true. It may be set for the next budget calendar. Um, so it may be set for a week, a month, or even a quarter, a three month period out. Then the librarian actually purchased the book from the wholesaler. They put in their order, the book is purchased, you get the sale, and then the wholesaler buys the books from you or from the print on demand company. So we see that chain where if a librarian puts in an order through Ingram, that order from Ingram goes to you at Ingram Spark. Ingram Spark prints the book and ships it out. So that process happens. And then the wholesaler sends the book onto the library. They get their end product that they can then put on the shelves. And that is the basic A through Z on how a library buys a book. Now, an indie publisher, of course, is just, in this case, this was my example, this is not a traditional publisher. This is a self-published author or a small press, mid-level press who is indie publishing books. 
A traditional publisher has much the same trajectory, but it may be slightly different because they have sales reps and different things like that. All right. So from then, what happens? Your book is available. And, but before you approach a librarian, I told you, you must have a wholesale distribution and you as the author, as the publisher, need to know where your book is available through wholesale. This is information you should know. We should not be going to the library and saying, well, I don't know, can you look it up? We should be going to them knowing where a book is available for purchase. Ingram Wholesaler is one of the most popular wholesalers for indie authors. So if you are not published by a traditional press or a big, you know, one of the big five, if you're not published by HarperCollins or uh, Random House, something like that, most of the time your books are available through Ingram Spark, which is a print on demand company who will get your book directly into Ingram Wholesaler. And libraries can order through Ingram Wholesale. Now, if you have eBooks, there are options, of course, if your book is exclusive through Amazon. So if you have an ebook up on Kindle Select for Kindle Unlimited, your ebook is exclusive to Amazon and you cannot upload it anywhere else. That's an exclusive contract. However, if your book is not in Kindle Unlimited, if it's not an exclusive contract with Amazon, you can upload your book to Overdrive. And that's where people check out books online. My favorite way to get into Overdrive is through draft to digital They're an aggregator that you can work with directly. You upload your book files and they get your book up in Overdrive, Baker and Taylor for eBooks. Um, and they also can go straight to the retail sites like um, Kobo, Nook, uh, iBooks. Now you can also of course go directly to Kobo who owns Overdrive, it's completely up to you. All right, and then if you have an audiobook, again, if your book is exclusive through ACX or anything like that, you are not eligible for this. But if you have an audiobook that you'd like available through libraries and it is not exclusive to anywhere, you can upload your book to Find Away Voices. Find Away Voices will upload your book. They will get it out into many places, including Overdrive for libraries. So these are the three easiest wholesale distribution options for small press, indie press, and self-published authors. Now, this is not the only options. These are the easiest options. So we only have so much time today. So if you're saying, well, I thought I could do something else, you probably can and feel free to ask any questions you'd like, but I'm just covering the basics and the, the easiest options that I think the group will benefit from the most. Now there are other wholesalers, Baker and Taylor. Baker and Taylor is the largest wholesaler that works directly with libraries because Baker and Taylor only sells to libraries and to schools. Most libraries prefer your book be available from Baker and Taylor. Now, as I mentioned, if you upload a draft to digital, your ebook is available through Baker and Taylor. Print books, however, have to be submitted through a book distributor or directly you can apply to them. But when you do that, you actually have to apply, show proof on demand. So it's not necessarily your beginning steps if you're just getting into this. There's also Brodart, Midwest Library Wholesalers, and some other ones, but those are the basics. All right, um, now, um, I wanted to add just a special note on CIP and PCIP blocks. A CIP is a cataloging in publication block. A PCIP is a publisher's cataloging in publication block. What is that? Well, it's just a fancy way of saying that these are blocks of text usually found on the copyright page of a book that describes the book using a very specific set of vocabulary and structure. These are numbers and things that you will typically see on the copyright page. And what this is, is this is a block of text that includes the Library of Congress authorized subject headings, classification numbers, Dewey Decimal Systems, that the librarians need to get the book ready to put the shelf on their libraries. Now, if your book is with a traditional publisher, chances are they will submit for a CIP block. If you are indie or small press or self-published, you don't qualify for a CIP. 
a CIP is only available to publishers that have a minimum of 10 titles published by three different authors. So if you don't qualify for that in your self-publishing or indie publishing, you can get something called a PCIP. The Publishers Catalog and Publication Block is a cataloging block that rather than getting through the Library of Cong Congress for free, you can go, you can go to a company and have them catalog your book for you. What's so valuable about this? Well, when they create that cataloging and publication block, it's already cataloged for the librarian so that they don't have to catalog it for you. Because if you don't have a PCIP, what happens is when a library buys the book, if your book's not cataloged, your book goes into the cataloging room and it has to be cataloged by a cataloging librarian. Now, I have heard of good authority from multiple librarians that they rarely have a dedicated cataloging librarian. And that is typically a librarian who has other duties and does cataloging when they have downtime. They don't have a lot of downtime. So sometimes your book will sit in the cataloging room for up to two years waiting to get cataloged which means it's not on the shelf. It's not getting advertised, it's not getting checked out, it's not helping you really. So when you have a PCIP that is done by a cataloging company, that block is already available to the library. It is a value added feature because rather than having to sit in the cataloging room and have someone physically go in and catalog your book, all they have to do is look up the block of text, scan it in, say that's the book and it goes into their library system and can go on their shelf so much more quickly. So if your book is something you really want to market to libraries, consider getting a PCIP block. I, again, don't have too much time to devote to that, but there is a link here if you go to newshelves.com. We have an entire um, kind of fact about PCIP and CIP, so you can find that at this link or simply go to newshelves.com, go to the search bar and type in PCIP. You'll find a wealth of information. And the other thing I wanna add about a PCIP block that's so fabulous is that when you do that, if you work with a great cataloging company, and I do have recommendations on the website, when you work with them, they upload your book information directly to the OCLC system. That's the cataloging system that actually runs WorldCat. So you'll be able to track your book on WorldCat. They also upload your book directly to the MARC system, M-A-R-C. And that is the system that works for eBooks and audiobooks. So it gets your book available in a wealth of places. It's easier for libraries to find you and to catalog your book, which makes you just a little bit easier to say yes to when you're pitching your book to them. All right. Now, when we talk about wholesalers and why they're so important, there are three main reasons. Number one, ease of purchasing. These are direct quotes from buyers. I don't have time to set up a new account every time I find a book I want to try. Oftentimes, authors or publishers will ask me, well, can't they just buy the book direct? Well, libraries can in some cases. In others, they're literally not allowed to buy direct. They have to go through a wholesaler. And even if they can buy direct, it means they have to set up an entire account for you. That's a lot of work and they don't want to do that. So having your book available through a wholesaler makes purchasing easier. Then there are the rules of purchasing. I place more orders once a week. If my wholesalers don't have it, the book does not get ordered. Again, some libraries simply do not have the option of purchasing books anywhere other than specified wholesalers. And then there's credibility. If a wholesaler has a book, I know it is legitimate, especially as a new author, a author that's kind of breaking into the scene or an indie author, a self-published author, having your book available from the correct purchasing channels from a wholesaler gives you a lot of credibility. And it again, makes it easier for the librarian you're asking to order your book to say yes. Now, when you're pitching, in addition to having your book available from a wholesaler, you need some basic marketing materials. You're not crazy. You need a sales sheet. You need a one sheet that tells us all about your book, your ISBN, um, where to purchase it. 
you need an author sheet. This is optional. However, if you're pitching to libraries that you have a personal connection with, either it's a local library that you think would take your book because you're local or it's somewhere you grew up with, or you have um, speaking things, you think that you would be a great speaker for libraries. An author sheet is a fabulous thing to have. You also need a marketing plan. It's really important when you're selling your book to libraries that you not just ask them to stock your book, but you tell them how you're going to help market the book so you can help them meet their goal of satisfying readers and bringing in people from the community to come check out the book. And then you need a cover letter. You need an introduction. So let's look at that. When we're working with a book sales sheet, it does not have to be complicated. There are, in fact, if you go to newshelves.com, you go to our store, we have several templates. They are a couple bucks. I think they're like $4. You can get a template for making your own sales sheet. You can do this in Canva. I don't care, but these are the basics you need on there. You need to list your price. This is your retail price, not your discount price, your retail price. So make sure you include that. Make sure you include the ISBN. As I mentioned before, sure, we can ask someone to search the title and the author name. However, what if your book is, um, I don't know, The Duke by Jennifer Jones? I'm willing to bet there are probably 20 titles that are called The Duke or have The Duke in it. And Jennifer Jones is not exactly a unique name. So it can bring up a lot of options and those are a pain to filter through trying to find your book. So just include your ISBN number. It's like a social security number for your book. I can take that ISBN number. I can look it up on Ingram. I can look it up on Baker and Taylor, Amazon. I can Google it and I will probably find your book. So make sure you include your 13 digit ISBN number for your book when you're pitching it. You also wanna tell them the publisher. And if you are indie published or self publishing, please, please, please create a publishing name or publishing imprint to be the face of your company. If you need more information on how to create that publisher name, go to newshelves.com, go to our blog, Search in publishing company. I have a whole article on how to do that. It's very easy. You also want to make sure that you include the trim size and page count. Why? Well, we need to know your book is going to fit on my shelf because for all I know, you decided to be the first person ever to print a romance novel in a, I don't know, in a seven by 11. I've seen so many things, I wouldn't even be surprised. They need to know that your book is standard. They need to know it's going to fit on their shelves and that it's going to be what they need. And finally, include your wholesaler availability. Don't make them ask, where can I find your book? Tell them, for, for the love of goodness, tell them, anticipate their needs. My book is available from Ingram, Baker and & Taylor, and Gazelle Book Services, Gazelle. Um, and you're going to tell them it's at a full trade discount and if it is, give them the terms, tell them who your book is available from. You could easily say, print book available from Ingram, ebook available from Baker and Taylor and Overdrive. It's as simple as that. Don't make them ask, anticipate their needs, let them know that you are a pro and tell them from the get-go where they can order your book because that is a really tiny thing. It's a little nod that tells them you're a pro, you're gonna be easy to work with, and you're probably a partner they would like to have. So book sale sheet, absolutely have one. Make it easy on the buyer to say yes. Now, if you are interested in an author sheet, here's an example. You want to make sure that you have your author bio, does not need to be long, um, speaking topics. If you think that your book is perfect for um, book club, you could have book club discussion prompts instead of speaking topics. Or if you have a nonfiction book, can you give a class? Can you give a free class to the library on how to knit? Um, can you speak to children on different things? If you have a children's book, can you do a story time? Give them easy ways where you are offering additional value. It's not just a book on the shelf. You are going to offer additional value because you can do a class for them. You can do a story time for them. Tell them how you can be a good partner. And make sure that you have your contact information. 
This is the number one mistake I see when authors create book sheets, one sheets, author sheets, is that they don't give us their contact information. Do not make me go to your website and search for your contact. Give me a direct contact, whether that be a phone number, an email. Make sure that it's easy for me to get in touch with you if I need to. And a marketing plan. A marketing plan does not need to be fancy. It can be, it can be super fancy, but it doesn't need to be. What it should include is marketing budgets if you have them. If you can say, I've got dedicated ad funds where I'll be marketing directly um, in the location of your library and letting people know that my book's available, that could be a Facebook ad that runs for $10 that tells people in a specific location that the book's available and they should go check it out. Does not need to be complicated. Social media platforms. If you've got a million followers on TikTok or you've got 5,000 followers on Facebook, tell them about your social media platforms. Tell them about your reach and how you're going to use that reach to tell readers that your book is available from this library. How can you market them? You want them to hand sell your book, display your book, buy your book. How can you market that library in turn? Advertising plans. If you know that you're going to be advertising in Publishers Weekly and you're advertising in the local newspaper or on Amazon to make sure that people know about your book, make sure that you put that in there so they know that you are actively working to build your brand and awareness for your book. So they have some reasonable expectation that people might be interested in your book or might even come looking for your book. You have media appearances. If you are featured in any magazine, if you've got blog posts going up, if you are on podcasts, let them know about it. Again, let them know that you're not just asking them to put a book on the shelf, that you are creating awareness for a book that will be popular with their patrons because that's one of their goals. Reviews and endorsements. If you have reviews from uh, Midwest Book Review, Kirkus, Forward, if you have reviews, if you've got a nonfiction book for, um, or let's say you have a children's book and you have amazing endorsements from local psychologists or a well-known book author or something like that, put those in there. They are social proof, they are credibility. Put them in there and let them know that your book has been vetted by others and it's already been found to be popular. And ways you're going to promote the library. Again, this does not have to be complicated. You do not have to tell them you're going to spend $100,000 on local ads. Tell them I'll be running a Facebook ad targeting 25 mile radius of your library, letting people know they can go check my book out from your library. You don't have to tell them that you're going to spend $10 on it. You don't have to tell them you're going to spend $5 on it. Maybe you're not going to do anything. Maybe you are just going to put up on social media and say, hey, folks, just so you know, my book's now available from this library. Just let them know that you appreciate them and what you're going to do to help drive traffic and be a good partner. Now, your cover letter. Here's an example. You can download this cover letter for free. If you go to the New Shelves website, you go to our store. It's free on there. You can go download it. Dear Amy, my name is Carrie. I am the author of a parenting book for stressed out moms. And I was hoping you would consider stocking the book in your library as a print and an ebook. We are about to launch a marketing campaign and I'm contacting libraries to let them know that there will be some demand during and after this campaign. Here, I've already established a couple things. I'm going to use the librarian's first name. For the love of goodness, don't say acquisition librarian. They have names. They are people. Take the time to find out what their first name is and address them by that. Introduce yourself. Tell them your name and give the category of your book. Why? Front and center, because this tells us who the book is for and who it needs to go to. Because if there is a big library, Sometimes there's a children's acquisition library and there's a nonfiction, a fiction. So tell them the basic category of your book. And then we're telling them we're creating buzz for this book and I'm contacting libraries to let them know there is going to be some demand. My book will be popular and you should stock it is essentially what we're saying. 
stressed out moms, ISBN 978, blah, blah, blah. Give them the whole 13 digit ISBN. Remember, this is your book social security number. Put your book ISBN front and center in your cover letter. It is a book that helps stress out moms realize that they can do everything right and they're succeeding at life and their kids love them. I don't know. Obviously, I'm feeling the mom thing today. So give them a couple sentence, one or two at max, synopsis of your book. Make sure it is grabbing them, that it gives them the idea of what the book is about. If you've got a fiction book, give them your hook, tell them who's going to want to read it and do it quickly. This should not be paragraphs long. This should be one to two sentences. This is your elevator pitch. Give them the title, the ISBN, and then the quick elevator pitch for your book. Once the marketing campaigns begin, we will be directing readers to the libraries that agreed to stock it. So if you're willing, I'd like to know what terms and wholesalers you prefer when acquiring books. This again is a little nod. I'm a pro. I know that you have specific terms that you only work with certain wholesalers. So I know this and I'm letting you know that I know this. I don't even remember the name I gave my book, but whatever it is, is available at Ingram and Baker and Taylor, fully returnable at the full discount. The ebook is also available for sale or licensing from Baker and Taylor ebooks and Overdrive. So first I'm gonna tell them, hey, let me know your terms and your wholesalers. And then I'm going to say, by the way, this is where it's already at. So maybe this answers the question without you actually having to do anything. I'm going to tell them where my book is available. I'm going to show them that I'm going to be a good business partner who is easy to work with. I'm going to give them the information like the title of the book in the ISBN so they can go directly to that wholesaler. They can search the book then and there and they can make a decision on whether or not they'd like to stock it. I've attached the marketing plan, a link to my book in electric format. So if you kind of want to give them a sneak peek, you could do a book funnel um, link or a PDF link and an informational sheet that's your book one sheet for you to review. Again, you're giving them, you're hand feeding them all the information. You can go search my book or here's all the information right here so you can decide if you want it or not. And then we're just going to sign off as simple as this. Now, when sending this, I do think it's very important. This should be top in front of your email. Yes, you can send out printed documents. Almost everything goes by email now though. So email them, put this in the header. Then I will tell you this here and now, try not to send a bunch of attachments. Do not send a bunch of PDFs. Do not send your full interior book as a PDF. It will be sent to spam. What I recommend you do is you take your book one sheet. You can attach it as a PDF if they ask for it. However, more than that, I would save your book one sheet as a JPEG and I would embed it in the email right under your cover letter. Don't give them more than they need, but give them everything they need. Sounds, you know, it sounds like a lot, but it's really not because I've given you all the tools in this training so that you can easily do that. Now, now that your book is available through wholesalers and you have the knowledge of the marketing materials you need to wow librarians, it's time to actually start contacting them. There are a couple of ways to do this, but consistency is key. A few calls or emails to librarians each day can add up to huge sales. And once one library stocks your book, guess what? If it's cataloged, it's going to show up in WorldCat, which means the next pitch, they can look it up and say, oh, well, so-and-so is stocking the book. Maybe I should, you know, maybe I should kind of look at it. You've started to build that social proof, but you have to be consistent. The best place to start is going to be your local library. Find your local library, find the local acquisitions library, and email them. Call them if you'd like, but email is always a winner because they can look at it on their own time. If you have ties to other libraries, let's say that you went to school in Boston, well, make that local connection with that school in Boston. Hey, I went to school in Boston and I was in your library constantly. It holds a big place in my heart. I would love if you'd consider my book. Anytime you can make a personal connection with the librarian, you're building trust and you're more likely to get your book stocked. 
So start local, start where you have connections. Also, if you have friends, family, readers in different parts of the country or the world, encourage them to go request your book at their library. The librarian's job is to keep their patrons happy. So if a patron comes in and asks for a book, chances are they are going to order it. And I also recommend that if your book would be of specific service to a, uh, a regional location, pitch them and tell them why. If you have a bilingual book and you know there is a bilingual community that probably could use some books that are bilingual, reach out to them specifically. Let them know why you think your book's a good fit. And again, consistency is key. There are also big mailer blasts. New Shelves does them. I'll tell you about that in a minute, where we actually have a list of library buyers that we pitch your book to. And this is a great start. It's a way to reach a lot of buyers at one time. Highly recommend it. We've seen a lot of success there, but that's not the end. That's the beginning. That is something that can bolster your pitching, but you still want to keep pitching out to libraries because that's how it starts. It starts grassroots. It starts one email at a time. And then as your popularity, as other libraries stock your book, it starts to snowball and consistency is the key to making sure that your book is really a staple in libraries. Once libraries say yes, make sure that you are driving traffic to your book. Do that Facebook ad. Do that social media post, email your newsletter folks and let them know your book is now available at XYZ Library. Drive traffic because they do actually track that. They can see how often a book has been checked out. And if your book is being checked out, when you go to pitch them your next book, they're more likely to say yes. Work towards an event. If it's a local library, they offer virtual events. How can you actually work directly with the library? Because if you do an event for them, guess what they're going to do? They're going to market you and your event. They're going to tell people about it They're on their billboards send out their emails. So that's a huge opportunity. So consider working towards an event. If you build great rapport with those librarians, ask for an endorsement. If you become buds with the local librarian, they're like, yeah, I read the book. I thought it was great. Ask them for an endorsement. Oh, could I have a quote so that I can actually use that? And then use that endorsement, use that pitch in your next library campaign because librarians trust librarians. Keep pitching and growing. New libraries are opening up all the time. Just because a library said no once doesn't mean they won't say no to your next book or won't say yes to your next book. So keep pitching, keep growing. Your book goes to die when you stop marketing it. So just like you can never stop with ads if you want to gain new readers, you have to continually pitch. It does not have to be a full-time job. Pick three libraries to email every single day or pick Tuesdays the day I'm gonna reach out to libraries for 15 minutes. If I get through one library email or I get through five, that's what I'm going to do. But I promise once you get your systems in place, it'll become quicker and easier to get that done. Now I'm going to open it up for questions. I know that we had a couple, so I'm going to go back and read those. All right, I'm based in Europe. Do I need to use a US PCIP block as well as a, a um, European copyright notice? So the answer to that is if you are pitching your book to the US market, you need to make sure that your book is available in their cataloging system. The easiest way to find out Go to worldcat.org, search your ISBN. If your book's already in there, it's already cataloged. If it's not, consider getting a PCIP block. It will make your book that much more easier to find. But again, it depends. Are you pitching your book to the U.S. market or are you only pitching your book um, locally to where you're at? That would answer your question. Who owns Overdrive? Overdrive is owned by Kobo. Um, let's see. Yes, and for anyone who had to drop off, we will do a replay link. I know this is last minute. I can't believe so many of you joined me live. Um, and I'm glad you did, but I will also have a replay and I'll keep that link live for a week. Um, let's see, and if you have a question, drop it in the, um, make sure you just drop it in the Q&A and I'll see it there. 
Uh, yes, Kobo. Kobo is a ebook distribution outlet. You can find them simply by Googling Kobo. Um, let's see, getting my children's book out to libraries is coming up goal I have. So I'm glad libraries love children's book because that's one of their big markets. Um, yes, I will send a replay link. Absolutely. All right. And let's see, does WorldCat show which libraries it's in? So in answer to that, WorldCat will show which libraries are cataloging your book. If your book is being cataloged by a library that subscribes to WorldCat. So sometimes you'll see your book is carried in 15 libraries, but it'll only show the name of five. And what that means is your book is being cataloged by 15 libraries, but only five are actually in their subscription system. And that's why. So in some cases, yes, in some, no. Then Julie's saying, I have a nonfiction picture book that's won awards and children's and adult praise. How do I get libraries to buy my picture book? Um, absolutely. You got to pitch it and you've got to make sure that you include those awards, those reviews, and those accolades in your pitch. Let's see. Yes. And again, if you have questions after this, every Friday, 10 a.m. Eastern, I go live on Free Advice Friday, which is just newshelves.com slash F-A-F. You can register and join as you wish. I go live every Friday for an hour. I take questions live and I answer those questions live. So if you kind of think of something later, your brain's kind of overwhelmed, we've got you there. Now, if you'd like to connect and you're not following us yet, New Shelves is set up on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, and YouTube. We do a lot of videos on YouTube and helpful tutorials. And then I promised you guys to give you information on the New Shelves library mailing. And I saw there was a question in there. So yes, if you would like New Shelves to pitch your book to libraries, New Shelves has been working with libraries for a long time. We have a list of 7,000 library buyers across the US. This spans academic libraries, public libraries, and school libraries. And we have a list of 7,000 librarian buyers that we do pitch books to. They do have to meet certain criteria, such as being available at a wholesaler. But if you would like new shelves to pitch your book to libraries, I do have a library mailing coming up in December and January. Now, um, sign up is going to end December 2nd, so it will be ending just the end of this week. It's $199 to get your book pitched out to those 7,000 library buyers. It's a great start if you're just starting to market your book to libraries or if you've been doing it and feel kind of stuck. Um, a great opportunity for you. When you sign up, I do look at your book, I vet it and make sure it's a good fit. If for any reason, I don't think your book's a good fit, it's not available in the right wholesalers, I actually email you and I say, hey, uh, it's not a good fit, let me refund you. Or this is what you need to do and let's bump you to the next one. Um, I do that all the time because these librarians are expecting that I'm going to give them a fully vetted list and that they trust me for that. So it's very important to me that your book is a good fit and that when we present your book to them that you have a chance at being sold into that library system and that the librarian is going to like what they see. Um, so the children's book mailing is going to be December 7th. If you'd like to be in the children's book library mailing, which is one of our most popular, most open, most clicked on mailings, I recommend that you sign up as soon as possible. I do cut that off if we have too many signups. Um, so I recommend you do that. Adult fiction mailing is going out December 14th and the nonfiction mailing is going out January 4th just in time for the new year. But all of this is under the one sign up that closes off December 2nd. Um, I see lots of comments and questions. So let me see if I can answer those about this. Um, yes, if you've already signed up for a library mailing and you were pushed or anything like that, you'll be getting an email this week with that. Um, let's see, should you promote a two book package? In some cases you can, if it makes sense, if your book is a series or it goes together, what I always do is I lead with the most popular or the first or most recent book in the series. And then you mention the other ones. So you can say Road to the Breaking is a wildly popular historical fiction series that now has eight books. That way you're featuring one book, 
but you're telling them there's more. Um, do I do personal follow-up? So we have, it's all done by email. It's one email sent out. Our library and buyers have been on our list in some cases years, like 10 years or more. So they get regular emails from us. So it's not individual follow-up. That's not something that we offer. It's not something that our library list expects from us. It is a feature. We do cap it. I never do more than 10 books in one specific mailing. So children's books, no more than 10. Adult fiction, no more than 10. Uh, we put buy buttons right in there so they can very easily click to go to Overdrive or Ingram, whatever it may be, and buy if they'd like. And they know if they have questions, they can always email us and let us know. And again, that's $199. Um, if you cannot get to us by December 2nd, what I recommend you do is email me. Tell me you're interested. Give me your ISBN. And what I'll do is I'll put you on my list for next time. I actually haven't even promoted these mailings for the last two times I've done them because the wait list was so long that they were filled up and I, I didn't need to promote them. Um, so if you're interested, but December 2nd is too soon for you, email me, let me know. You'll go on my wait list so I can email you next time I have a mailing going out. Yeah, as far as the author sheets and things that's not included in this mailing, there are, again, templates. If you go to newshelves.com, go into the store, there are book sheet templates, but we are creating your listing. So you don't need a book sheet and all these things to go into the library mailing. We are creating a mailing for you. And I, gosh, I should have mentioned, if you go to newshelves.com slash library sales, if you go to that website, it gives you all the information of what's included in the library mailing. Um, so that way you can see what's included and what's expected from you. If you're not sure, you guys just email me and I will try to get back to you as soon as possible. Um, but it's just newshelves.com slash library sales. And that'll tell you exactly what you need. And then a lot of times it does come with helpful hints of, hey, saw your book and I think it's fabulous, but I didn't notice your ebook up on Overdrive and it's not on Kindle Unlimited. I would recommend to do this, um, that kind of thing. So absolutely, I'll help you where I can. We have lots of resources for you and we try to make it as user-friendly as possible. So just go to newshelves.com slash library sales. All right. Happy to help, Julie. Uh, let's see. Is draft to digital considered a wholesaler? Um, so no, but close. So draft to digital is a aggregator. They are a company that is you upload your book to one spot and then they get your book available in multiple retailers and wholesalers. So draft to digital, if you upload your book there, can get your book available to Baker and Taylor, which is a wholesaler for ebooks. They can get your book into Overdrive, which is a wholesaler for ebooks. Um, they can also do retail sales like Nook and iBooks and Kobo. So they are an aggregator for sales. They are not a wholesaler, but they are the path to the wholesaler. All right. Love it, Felix. I am excited. I will look into that and um, be in touch soon. All right, you guys, I think I answered all the questions, but if I did not answer any questions, let me know. Um, if you like this kind of pop-up webinar and you'd like to see more, please let me know that too. Um, I can't always, I do a lot of training, so I don't always know so far in advance, but if you guys like this type of thing, I have a similar class on retail sales and different things like that. So if this was helpful, if you like these free webinars where we kind of go over a specific topic and you either would like to see more of them or if you found this one valuable and you have a suggestion for a new webinar, email me, um, Carrie, K-E-R-I at newshelves.com. Let me know what you thought of this one, if you have ideas for another webinar, um, or sometimes that could be a YouTube video. Again, if you're not following us on YouTube, if you go to youtube.com, slash new shelves books. We've got a bunch of tutorials up there and I always take suggestions. If there's something you haven't seen or you'd like a how-to on, um, I take suggestions and try to make sure that we add value and give you opportunities there. Good. I'm so glad that you guys enjoyed this. Um, the webinar was recorded. I will get a replay up. I'll send that out. I'll keep the replay up for about a week. 
Um, I can't keep this webinar up in perpetuity because this is one of those webinars that I actually do for a lot of other groups. Um, and so it's something I can't keep up for forever, but I'll put it up for a week. I will give you a replay access. If you have follow-up questions, join us on Free Advice Fridays. Let me know. And um, thank you so much for giving me your time today. I know that, again, it was last minute, but I'm so glad you joined me. You guys were a great group just being so interactive, which I appreciate. I will look forward to hearing from you guys soon. Again, newshelves.com, carry at newshelves.com. <laughs> Excuse me. And I hope you guys have a fabulous night. Bye, guys.